Mary gave birth to a baby boy, Prince James, the future James VI. Named so because there have been five previous King James of Scotland. It's not like Boris Johnson who has to number his kids so he can keep count of how many he's got. James was born in Edinburgh Castle in June 1566. The castle was chosen over Holyrood for the labour because it was deemed more secure and because, well, labour can't get anywhere near Holyrood. There were huge celebrations across Scotland at the news of the birth of an heir. James was the most celebrated wee boy in Scotland until Ur Willie. His baptism in December 1566 was a three-day event the likes of which had never been seen in Scotland before. There were three days of constant banquets, masks and party. It was like 10 Downing Street during a lockdown. They constructed a huge medieval fortress on the castle Esplanade and they had a mock siege. They pretended that inside this fortress were these weapons of mass destruction and that they had to get at them. It was all nonsense, fairy tale and make-believe. Everyone had a right good laugh about it anyway. The meals, they were served on these huge mechanical machines and moving conveyor belts, likes of which no one would have seen before. To this day, we still don't know how they were able to achieve it. We just know that this was the extent they were willing to go to to ensure that rich cunts didn't have to tip their waiting staff. James, he was baptised by Catholic rites, which in Scotland is when a boy becomes a boy. Queen Elizabeth of England, she was made James's godmother, fulfilling the role of, uh, I'm gonna make them a settlement they can refuse, huh? Actually, do you know what? That's a, a different uh, Queen Elizabeth. The whole thing was topped off with a huge fireworks display. And Mary, she was trying to use the occasion as a display of royal authority. She was trying to use the baptism to bring together her warring noble factions. One of the highlights of the event was the public reconciliation of Murray and Bothell, who were made to shake hands in public like Donald J. Trump and Kim Jong-un. The only low point was Darnley. Darnley refused to attend any of the events. He was still sulking about not being crowned king. Although, bizarrely enough, he still lodged himself in Stirling for the duration, watching on from the sidelines sulking like an old firm supporter watching Scotland at the Euros.